Over the last seven years or so, Young and May has risen to prominence as one of the most exciting and unique voices in the rap game. But that's not all she has managed to achieve. She is also an entrepreneur and songwriter, with even a couple of acting credits to her name. But right now, people are not talking about her talent. Instead, her allegiance or fans are worried about her health, which seems to have deteriorated significantly over the last year or so. What really happened to Young and May, and how did she end up in the position she's in now? Young and May's rise to fame. One thing that immediately sets Young M.A. apart is the fact that she rapped about the same topics tons of male rappers did. Violence, money, and sex. She gave it her own spin, immediately making her a unique voice in the game. But her role to finding acclaim was a little unconventional to say the least. In 2014, a Facebook post criticizing her music inadvertently set Young M.A. on the path to stardom. A little while after Nicki Minaj and G. Herbo dropped Chirac, Young M.A. released a freestyle to the track titled Brooklyn Chirac. In the post, the song was heavily criticized for its violent and negative overtones. It was questioned. Why would ever adult who signed her is encouraging her to send violent negative genocidal energy into the community that may get her killed and is killing her own people? It did not have the intended impact though, as all the post did was give Young M.A.'s name a platform and get more people to check out her work. The post had initially been made by Boyce Watkins, who was an author and political analyst, and he probably did not expect that he would play an unwitting role in making Young M.A. a star. Over the course of the year, her reputation only continued to grow, and in 2016, she made it big with the release of her debut single, Ooh. The song was massively successful, with 7 million streams on Spotify by the time September rolled around, along with peaking at number 19 on the Billboard Top 100. Not just that, but several artists even released remixes of the song, as Young and May's popularity continued to grow with each passing week. As a matter of fact, she even opened for Beyonce in New Jersey during Queen Bay's Formation World Tour. Everything about how Ooh, from how it was created to how it was promoted, represented new age tactics to building the new star. Young and May reportedly bought the beat to the song from the same website that she did the instrumental for the wildly successful Panda by Designer. Almost a year after the song even released, Young and May had started using the phrase ooh with her friends and even used it in her Oh My God freestyle. That way, when the song was eventually dropped, her fan base already had some connection to the seemingly ridiculous sound. That one song shook up the entire New York rap scene and potentially offered a direction for buddy rappers to follow. Young and May understood that she had created something special and said, New York was doing a lot of following whatever the wave was at the time. It was corny. I always stressed the fact that we needed that sound again. I continuously tried to knock on the door. Yo, this is New York City. What's up? With Ooh, Young and May tapped into the unique energy of New York City while still leveraging certain rap tropes and making them her own. In the weeks and months that followed, Young and May focused on releasing multiple singles and freestyles, including I Get the Bag and Walk, which racked up millions of listens across multiple platforms. Young and May had the Midas touch and could seemingly do no wrong. All these tracks were building her up to her first studio album, Herstory in the Making, officially released on September 27, 2019. The album was also wildly successful, peaking at number 16 on the Billboard Top 200. Her next couple of projects weren't as big a deal, but they were still pretty successful in their own right. In just a couple of years, Young M.A. had established herself as a household name. The things that make Young M.A. really interesting beyond her undeniable talent are her approach to newfound fame and what she has done with her platform to explore other artistic fields and also help people in need. In addition to all of that, she's always been really open about her struggles with her sexuality and other aspects of her life. I'm going to touch on all of these things in just a bit because it's really important to understand just what makes Young M.A. so special as an artist. Why her fans care about her so much and just why her recent health issues have so many people concerned. Soon after Ooh blew up, Young and May's multiple interviews provided a lot of insight into just what made her tick, both as a person and as an artist. As I mentioned earlier, she never shied away from rapping about the same topics that her male counterparts and that often included the objectification of women. This was a trend that was prevalent in Ooh, as well as with Young and May using a couple of, let's say, unsavory words to describe women. This isn't all that interesting in isolation, but Young and May's experience with her own sexuality suggest that there is more to this than meets the eye. Sure, we could just chalk all this up to a young female rapper trying to carve a niche for herself by hitting the same topics her male counterparts do, but Young M.A. has always stated that she knew she was attracted to women pretty much from her first day in school. In an interview with Time Magazine back in early 2017, Young M.A. spoke a little bit about how being in New York was pivotal in helping her accept her sexuality. Life is too short. I need to just be myself, express myself. And New York City is popular. I used to think to myself, Man, there's a lot of gay people out here. And it had me comfortable. It was like I could be myself. 
I used to still try to hide it until it was really overwhelming. There was just too much girls attracted to me. Even though she knew, she made the decision not to tell anyone else for a long time. Then, when she finally turned 18, she came out to her family. Being accepted by her loved ones was a turning point in the young rapper's career. She has always said that she views music as therapy and a medium for self-expression. Now that she wasn't hiding who she really was from the people she cared about the most, she was able to pour her true self into what she was creating. Despite her attraction to the same sex, Young M.A. isn't a fan of labels and doesn't want to be known as just that gay or lesbian rapper. This sentiment perfectly aligns with the name she has chosen for herself as a performer. The M.A. in Young M.A. stands for me always and is a clear message to people to always be unapologetically themselves. And being pigeonholed or typecast completely goes against her thought. In the same Time Magazine interview I had mentioned earlier, Young M.A. was of the belief that people should connect to her through her music and not focus on her sexual orientation, but rather what she was trying to say about overcoming depression and other personal setbacks. She said, I hear from all different people, not just just people like me or lesbians it be straight people it be grown men it be grown women people that have been sick or depressed that say oh you made me want to go do what i want to do for myself and chase my dreams that's my purpose it's an interesting perspective to have because she also understands that other artists have tried to bring these conversations into mainstream rap but she has been the first woman to actually pull it off in a way by rapping about the same topics as her male counterparts young and may has positioned herself as one of the guys but she is so much more than that to all the rappers that don't fit in a specific mold and want to break into the the industry. This approach allows her to break into the game without having a true rival. She exists in a niche of her own and can collaborate with pretty much anyone and benefit both performers. Her love for creating music and finding a path to success wasn't just affected by her sexuality, but also the loss she experienced when she was young. These were losses that would determine what kind of artist she would be, what she would choose to do with her fame and platform, and the choices she would make in the years to come. By the time she was in her mid-twenties, Young and May had already lost her aunt and grandfather, but the death that affected her the most was that of her elder brother, who was stabbed by one of his former friends when she was just 17. The aftermath left her struggling with depression, and she was able to get better with therapy. His passing still hurts her today, but she has used her music as a means to process her feelings. The authenticity tied to all her lyrics is what led her to have hundreds of millions of YouTube views, and her reputation is one of the most exciting, unique voices in the industry. She has only been a major player for a couple of years, but Young M.A. has wasted no time branching out into other projects. These projects have been a mix of creative endeavors and causes close to the rapper's heart. Like I mentioned earlier, her brother's death back in 2009 was perhaps the most transformative tragedy she experienced. After going through the entire process of grieving and trying to accept life without her brother, Young and May founded the Queens Foundation. The premise of the foundation is to help people deal with the trauma and grief that follows the death of a loved one. The rapper started the foundation with her mother, and another focus of the organization is to be of service to single mothers and low-income families in need. As of right now, the foundation is primarily focused on East New York, but it could expand in the years to come. Young and May has used real-life tragedy and turned it into an opportunity to help other people in her community. Her contributions have not gone unnoticed either, as she was listed in the Forbes 30 under 30 back in 2018, the same year that she launched the foundation. In fact, in 2018, the Rapper's Foundation even hosted a special Mother's Day brunch for families that had lost loved ones to gun violence. Having grown up in East New York and having lost their brother as well, Young and May deeply understood the need for a sense of community to stand up to the violence. While Queen's Foundation is probably the most personal out of all of her projects, Young and May has also expanded her skill set to include acting. She has had a few credits to her name, but the one that stands out to most is her four episode stint in the final season of Mr. Robot as a character named Peanuts. Mr. Robot had lost a fair amount of momentum by the time his last season rolled around, but in his first couple of years, it was one of the most exciting, innovative shows around. It made Rami Malik a star to watch and allowed him to establish himself as a major player in Hollywood. The show also gave Christian Slater a bit of career renaissance. But what makes all this particularly interesting is that Young M.A. proved herself to be talented enough to earn multiple appearances on the show after all already having established herself as a rapper. That last bit is important because back in 2016, she was offered a role on Empire as well. She was offered the role of Betty Bars, a character written and created specifically for her. But Young M.A. knew what she wanted. She stuck to her guns and turned down the role because she wanted to make a name for herself as an artist instead of being associated with a fictional character before having a recognizable identity of her own. This was definitely a bold choice because Empire was one of the hottest shows on TV back then and she would have had the opportunity to work alongside acting heavyweights like Terrence Howard and Taraji P. Henson, but the decision paid off for her in the long run, as not many people talk about Empire these days, but a lot of them are talking about Young and May. 
In 2018, the rapper combined her artistic expression and her journey to embracing her sexuality by directing an adult movie called The Gift. Sure, on the surface, this seems a little random, but her directorial debut was a part of the Visionary Directors Club. And not only that, Young and May was the first person to be part of this series. This was just proof of the fact that not only is she an important voice for LGBTQ, even if she rejects labels, but she is already regarded as something of a visionary as a rapper. Beyond all of this, the rapper has appeared on a ton of talk shows as well, whether to promote some of her work or just because she has been killing it with her music. As a matter of fact, she was featured as a musical act on an episode of The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, where she performed Blended Family alongside Lisa Keys. Young and May also regularly appears in one of the final segments of Vice News Tonight on HBO, where she offers her perspective on different genres of music. It is a cool way for Young M.A. to get her name out there and gives audiences an opportunity to understand just how her mind works as an artist. All of this stuff is focused on the last few years, but I want to take a minute and visit a younger Young M.A. I've already mentioned a couple of things about her early years, but you can't answer what really happened to Young M.A. without seeing where she started off. Growing up in the bottom of a bottle. Young M.A.'s real name is Katora Marrero, and she is of Jamaican and Puerto Rican descent. Her father went to prison when she was just a year old, which meant she was basically raised by her mother. Around the time she was seven, they left East New York to settle down in Chesterfield, Virginia. Unfortunately, the Brooklyn borough that the future rapper grew up in was immensely unsafe, forcing the mother's hand. Things went pretty well for them in Virginia, and at the age of nine, Young M.A. started writing rhymes in her school books and showed her fondness for rap. Instead of stymieing her daughter, Young M.A.'s mother encouraged her to pursue her passion and even bought a karaoke machine with Young and May's closet acting as her first unofficial studio. Her mother's influence actually goes way deeper. Young and May grew up in a household that always played hip-hop or reggae, and reportedly, her mother and uncle would often rap at home, but never really thought they could make a career out of it. So Young and May was exposed to this genre of music from pretty much the moment she was born, so it was no surprise when she decided to become a rapper. As she grew older, she began looking up to her older brother more and more. Considering the fact that her father was absent while she was growing up, this makes a lot of sense. She got into football and basketball as a way to connect with her sibling as they grew up together. In the late 2000s, the family moved back to Brooklyn when Young M.A. was 16. In 2009, her brother died in gang-related violence as he was literally stabbed in the back by a friend. I have already spoken about how Young M.A. dealt with his passing. One thing I did not mention is that she realized that throwing herself into work wasn't helping. Soon after, she decided to take a break from music, the one outlet for her emotions. She made the decision to move into retail and work for brands like Shake Shack, where she was flipping burgers, and TJ Maxx, where she was peddling discount clothing. But pretty soon, Young and May realized that this wasn't helping her either, and that music was the path she wanted to stay on. Using the money she was earning, she funded a recording studio for herself and was back at work. Even though working in retail was definitely an ill-advised decision, it proved to Young and May that rap and creating music was what she wanted to do with the rest of her life. But it wasn't just because she was missing the music. The rapper understood that she needed to get back to the art form to grieve as best she could. In an interview with Billboard, she said, music was my escape. At one point, I didn't want to do it no more. I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to go to college. I was lost. I was in the streets and just around the wrong crowd, doing miscellaneous things and not being focused. One day, I just got it together. I need to do something now before I hurt my mom or hurt myself. Music is something I always knew to do for sure. Nobody could take it from me. Years later, when she finally released her debut album, Her Story in the Making, she dedicated the album to her brother 10 years after his untimely death. Young M.A. was often asked about why it took her so long to drop the album, especially after all the success she had found with her singles. She responded stating that she wanted to take her time with the project and ensure it was the best it could be. The fact that she was an independent artist at this point in time meant that there was no record label pressuring her to meet deadlines. Also considering the fact that the album is meant to honor the memory of her brother, taking a little extra time to release it is a bit of a no-brainer. In an interview, she said, It's been 10 years. I done learned how to deal with it. I just carry him with me every day. And then I'm just happy to be able to present this album around this time to keep his name and memory. He rocking with me every day. He on my shoulders. As I mentioned earlier, Young and May's brother died in gang-related violence. He was believed to be a member of the Bloods. This association was what led Young and May to form her Red Life label. But the Red is not a reference to the Bloods. The rapper stated that it stands for Repent Everyday Life and is more relevant to her brother's passing than the gang itself. All of these events took quite a toll on Young May, and beyond dealing with depression and needing therapy, she may have developed one coping mechanism that has put her life at risk now and has all of her fans worried. Before I get into the nitty gritty of what's going on with Young May right now, I want to take a moment to just quickly recap some stuff. It's important because all the things I've mentioned earlier give context to the struggles Young May has had to this day and how they have all led her down the path everyone hopes she can find her way back from. So here goes. Young May's dad went to jail when she was a baby, so she was raised by only her mother. She also knew that she was a lesbian from her first day of school 
school. In the interest of keeping her children safe, young M.A.'s mom moved them to Virginia, where at the age of nine, she began to show an interest in rap and creating music. Her mom hooked her up with the karaoke machine and nurtured her talent. She really looked up to her brother and got into sports to be more connected to him. They moved back to East New York when she was 16, and unfortunately, her brother was killed in gang-related violence in 2009. This sent young M.A. spiraling into depression, but she was able to work through it. After she came out to her family when she was 18, she really committed to her music and went viral in 2014. In 2016, her song Ooh was a massive hit, and she became a star almost overnight. And that's about it. So let's get into just how things started to go wrong for young M.A. and her physical health. A number of rappers and music artists in general often live lives of excess, with massive wealth and the ability to operate unchecked, leading to a lot of them making questionable decisions. While Young M.A.'s struggles do not necessarily stem from her relatively newfound success, it could not have helped. Back in 2019, the rapper sat down for an interview with Time Magazine and gave some insight into her dependence on alcohol. She said, It became a little addicting, a habit of drinking no matter where I went. I still battle that, even now, she said. It's something that kind of runs in my family as well. Sometimes I look at it as an escape from all the pressures and BS that I deal with. I wanted to speak on it on the album because I know I'm not the only person that has this type of battle with any drug or addiction. In the same interview, Young M.A. also stated that she couldn't go anywhere without a bottle of Hennessy in tow, proving just how dependent she had become on alcohol. Elements of these struggles were showcased in her story in the making, the 21 song album, as the rapper was clearly looking for a creative outlet to come to terms with her issues with alcohol. I want to refer to something Young M.A. has said earlier where she stated that she saw music as an escape. It is possible that somewhere along the way the rapper stopped trying to process and move past her pain and focused on trying to escape it. And when the music just wasn't cutting it, it is possible she turned to the bottle to see if it could do the trick. While it was never officially confirmed, Young M.A.'s health seemed to deteriorate considerably between 2019 and 2021, with COVID-19 lockdowns potentially playing a role in increasing her alcohol consumption. In 2021, the rapper allegedly attended rehab to deal with her dependency, which had probably turned into an addiction at this point. It is difficult to tell just how successful her stint in rehab was. It's possible that she has developed a healthier relationship with alcohol over the last year and a half or so, but still has to deal with the ramifications of her dependency over the years. In late 2022, the rapper was allegedly spotted at a grocery store in a motorized wheelchair. A video began doing its rounds online as fans everywhere became concerned for her health. Y'all tell me if this is Young and May or not. Do you want the orange soda or do you want... In a cruel bit of irony, the rapper has started off 2022 by teaming up with NYAK Cognac to create their own limited edition label. NYAK wanted to leverage Young M.A.'s status as a breakout artist in the industry, and the rapper wanted the opportunity to create something unique for herself. If nothing else, these two events were a perfect representation of the rapper's complicated relationship with alcohol. She was reportedly very involved in the creation of the Cognac, choosing the color NYAK Red, which aligns itself perfectly with Red Life. Young M.A. saw this as the first step towards entering the beverage and alcohol market, and she said as much in her statement. This isn't something that I'm just the face of. This is something that I'm invested in and ready to make a staple in both the entertainment and beverage industries. Concern for the rapper reached a new fever pitch recently when a video of her at a barbershop shocked fans around the world. While getting her dreadlocks retwisted with celebrity barber, Fats the Barber, a video he made showed the rapper with yellowed eyeballs, a clear indication of liver disease. Everyone knows that alcohol abuse often leads to complications of the liver, and it seems like Young M.A.'s health issues may be far more serious than she was initially letting on. Fans saw the video of Fats Instagram account when he uploaded it as a story, and they were quick to criticize and chastise him for uploading it when the rapper was clearly ill. Young M.A. reshared the video to her story, which only served to reach a far wider audience and get even more fans concerned about her health. The rapper was quick to release a statement and stop her fans from freaking out even more. As many of my supporters know, I've been dealing with various personal health issues the last few years. I recently was hospitalized and was successfully treated for several conditions. I'm doing better now. We'll take some time, but I'm on the road to recovery and look forward to the future. Rest assured, I'm in good spirits and everything will be explained in the music, plus a documentary. Love y'all, mob. Don't worry, I'm good. Again, it is difficult to tell if Young M.A. is actually on the road to recovery or if she released this statement just to pacify people and stop them from obsessing over her appearance and health. Fan speculation also hasn't slowed down as they have suggested everything from liver failure to sickle cell disease, both of which lead to the yellowing of the eyes. But regardless of what is actually going on, Fats the Barber had to defend himself on social media 
media after being accused of trying to embarrass the rapper. He rightly pointed out that Young and May reposted the story to her account and that if she had any issues with being recorded in the first place, she would have stopped him immediately. That seemed to calm Young and May's fans down a bit and combined with her statement, they're probably breathing a sigh of relief. However, another statement the barber released asking for prayers pretty much confirms that not all is well with the rapper. He said, what y'all need to do is just send your prayers for her and that's that. She didn't have a haircut in a month and she wanted me to bring her haircut back to life, which I did. Thank you for coming, sis, and rocking with me like always. Love you. Beyond addiction running in her family, it's very possible that Young and May's alcohol addiction stemmed from hiding her true sexuality for so long, and then struggling to cope with the death of her brother, which sent her spiraling into depression. Whatever the reason is, hopefully Young and May's statement is true, and she's got the help she needed and is actually on the path to recovery. She is a really important voice in the rap game, and has just begun to scratch the surface of what she has to offer to the industry. Overall, Young and May's journey so so far proves one thing, that fame, fortune, and recognition cannot outrun pain. A lot of the rapper's defining moments have been driven by grief and loss, and while she has harnessed it to create great things, it is clear that the pain of losing her brother brought about an overall shift in her way of viewing the world. Under all the objectification and cussing in her lyrics, there is a woman who has turned to music to move past her pain, but has struggled to do so. Somehow through all of this, Young M.A. has consistently defied convention, creating a voice that is unique, fresh, and one that can be inclusive without resorting to labels. There are very few artists in the world who have been able to make such a huge impression on other heavyweights in the business in just a couple of years time. These are things that stand out in Young M.A.'s music. There's an earnestness and honesty that has allowed millions of people to connect with her and have them keep coming back to her music. Regardless of what happens, even if Young M.A. chooses to never create more music, she did achieve her goal in having people connect to her through her work. But seeing as how she channels her struggles and pain into her music, fans can probably expect a few bangers that chronicle the journey she has been on over the last few years. And hopefully, at the end of it, she will be in a better space mentally. Only time will tell what happens. And that's our video. If you enjoyed it, check out one of these videos too. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.